gotcha. super chats are going to be. Okay. Let's go live. All right. All right. Are we live? Yep. All right. Nice. Guys, progress. I actually made it to my, uh, to my live uh, on time. <laughs> and just barely. <laughs> and so anyway, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us tonight. And for everyone that asked and made sure we, uh, you know, we advertised, that's what, that's what we did this time. So for everyone who's with us, um, thank you so much. Again, no one's more shocked with the, uh, the success of this channel than I am. I was actually speaking with Chris Van Vliet earlier today and um, just, just telling him I still can't believe with what we've been able to accomplish. And I hope, you know, moving forward, we, we continue, to, continue to keep entertaining and continue to take this to places I don't even know where it can go. Um, before we start, though, I got a little bit of housekeeping to do. I have a few things. Uh, one thing I want to get off my chest, and then another thing I'm happy to announce. Um, so I'll get off my chest first. At the first live we did, I had to apologize for um, you know, just behavior I did back in the past when I was going through some, some, some struggles in my life. And guys, I'm not perfect. It happened again yesterday. So let me tell you what happened and you, you let me know what you think. So I'm flying here. I'm actually in South Dakota right now um, where, we, where we film. I'm with my partner who's over here doing God knows what on his cell phone. I'm sure it's something to help aid me. But so I'm getting ready to fly and you know, as bad as I am with anything technical, I'm equally as bad with, with you know, air travel. So I, had, I go out of my way. I make sure that everything's on my phone. I make sure it's in the app, and I have the app pulled up 24 hours ahead of time. So I get to the airport yesterday in plenty of time to get through TSA. So I go in, a nice family, a guy who's you know taken, taken four kids someplace. God bless him. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. He's definitely a lot, a lot braver than I am. Uh, lets me go ahead of him. So I go and, you know, they shuffle me off to go through the clear section. Now, if you've flown, you know that the clear is where they, you know, they get the eyeballs and, and then that gets you through security through TSA quicker. Well, I go up and I'm not clear. I'm, I'm not on the clear, uh, uh, whatever but that's just not me. So I go up to the young lady who's working there who looks like, she literally looks like she is as interested as I was in my 12th grade econ class in high school. Just zero desire to be there. So I show her my phone, I show her my boarding pass, and the person in front of me, she said to the left, and she looks at my boarding pass, sends me to the right. And my number one mistake was trusting her that A, she knew what she was doing and B, that she cared because she ended up sending me through the clear. So I go and go through the clear and I, they try to get my eyeballs and doesn't work, try it again, it doesn't work. And then another person shuffles over and tells me, ah, oh, you're in the wrong section to which I'm just a little bit mad, but not too mad at this point, because I'm hoping that the woman who sends me in the direction of utter uh, failure would notice her mistake and you know, at least apologize. So I go by her and I'm like, you, I show her my phone and half-heartedly I say, ah, you sent me down the wrong, you know, you sent me down the wrong lane. Now that's 15 minutes gone. And she looks at me like I'm a rack of yard tools on the wall at Sears, she's just like, oh, well, could utterly could not care. And, that, and then I'm like, ah, it just gets to me because I hate people that don't care about their job. So then I go through TSA and I'm going through baggage and they have to, you know, re pull my bag back. Now I know how to travel. So when they pull my bag back and re examine it, they're like, oh, there was nothing in it. And then a guy comes up to me and he's like, Maven. He's like, are you Maven? And at this point, I'm borderline missing my flight. So I was not in a great mood. And the guy comes up to me and shakes my hand. And I'm like, guy, I'm like, buddy, I'm, I'm, 
Now, now's not the best time. I'm just irate thinking that I'm going to miss my flight out here because, you know, and the reason why I'm mad at that point is because, you know, and a little sneak peek for this upcoming Friday's video, I, f I flew out here, you know, you know, pretty much last minute because of what happened in the WWE last week with, uh, you know, with, with, with CM Punk's return. There's an interesting video coming out this Friday um, about the match I had with Punk before he was signed. And it's not even really as much ra rating his match as it is. Something happened that I guarantee you, you guys don't know about. I don't even think Punk knows about it. So just don't worry. That's all I'm going to tell about that. <laughs> but yeah, so this guy, he, he, you know, he, and I, I feel bad. Like he, he was excited to meet me and I was a, kind of a jerk. So again, guys, that's me venting. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. I have a temper. I have a horrendous temper. I've, it's taken me a lot of, a lot of years, age, prayers, and just work to, to get better but occasionally it does catch up with me. So to whoever that was, I apologize, my man. It wasn't that, it, I wasn't mad at you. I was mad at the situation and I was mad at some girl that was strictly doing a job to collect a paycheck. So that's me, look, that's me taking ownership for my mistakes. Second bit of housekeeping news I wanna get before we start getting to the questions and I see they're uh, starting to add up. Um, I'm happy to, uh, happy, so happy to announce. Um, we've talked about it, and for the last two lives we've done, I've uh, said that I wanted to make this site, I've wanted to make what we're accomplishing here, and by we, I don't just mean myself and Zach, I mean me, Zach, and you guys, um, what we are all accomplishing. I wanna make that you know, reach, uh, far reaching. I wanna make that something that does a greater good than just me spouting off at my tongue you know, just stupid wrestling stories. Um, I want to make it mean something. And so we're going to do that this time. The fact that we get super chats, the fact that you guys are just generous enough. And trust me, I understand how tough things are. I get bills too. I juggle bills on a monthly basis and I decide what do I prefer more, electricity or cable? Well, cable wins that every time. But I understand what it's like to you know, to, to just not have money at the end of the month. I get it. Um, so when you are generous enough to help us out and help us keep this flagship up and running, you know, we, it, means, it means so much to us. So the same way we said the last time that we're going to, you know, start making donations, well, we're going to put that into action this time, this very live. So if you've donated to the Super Chat today, um, yeah, I've already said it, half of everything we make today is going to St. Jude's. And I made a, just a, Zach and I, we made a, uh, just a, a game time decision. Um, like I said, St. Jude's meant a lot to my mom. And I know that, you know, money given to them is going to go to a needy family. It's going to go to a family already struggling with the, the absolute worst possible thing a family can struggle with childhood cancer now moving forward there are i've mentioned there's three things that i want to donate to there's saint jude's there's something animal related and the third um thing that that we came up with is i want to find a charity that helps battered women or women trying to get out of a situation um i think i found one that actually accepts women that might need to bring children or animals into that situation. But I want this to be a, a, a channel that does good. Um, I made the, made the promise that let me get through the first one with St. Jude's. And then after that, I want you guys to help me pick the charity. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So every time we go live, and I mean every time, um, whatever you guys whatever you guys decide to donate our way, it's gonna be put to good use. We're going to, um, we're gonna, we're gonna donate it and we're gonna start that this week. And I'm happy to announce that when we send that check off, 
it's not going to say from me. It's not going to say from my partner. It's going to say from, in the memo section, from the fans of and then this channel. Because I want them to know that they're getting this from your generosity. Now, that said, I'm not a saint. We're, you know, we're going to keep some of it. I mean, I got to got to make sure I can still fly out there. Like I said, you know, American Airlines didn't fly me out here yesterday for free. This, uh, this Airbnb we're staying in right now, they're not giving it to me out of the goodness of their heart, but um, at least half of everything we earn is going to go to that. So again, that is because of you guys. Um, I want this channel to be something that, that does, does good in the world. My partner, sees sees things the exact same way I do and could not be in more of agreement. Um, so thank you for uh, for making that a possibility. All right, that's my housekeeping. Let's go. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you know everyone's ready for uh, for Christmas coming up. I I look forward to seeing some of the questions that we get tonight. Let's uh let's see. My man's gonna help me because I still suck at this. All right. And from Steve Paris, question number one. Maven, what is your superpower? Huh. <laughs> That's actually a, <laughs> what is your superpower? That's a great question, Steve Paris. Uh, you know what? I do have a superpower. My superpower is, how do I put this? The capacity for rational thought. Now, what do I mean by that? I am able to view any situation, and I mean any situation, and give my honest feedback, irregardless of personal bias or a any bias I might have. I'm able to, and this is where what I'm able to do that I don't think many, many can do, and that is I'm way more interested in getting something right and being right rather than being first. And... I'm able to look at a situation and hold strict beliefs on something, but willing to change my mind if new information presents itself. I could be you know, steadfast in my belief for something, and the minute I learn that maybe I was wrong, I'll pivot. I'll 180 degree turn and view it, from, view it through different eyes. Whether that is good for me or not, I'm able to admit my mistakes just like I did with with my, uh, my airport adventures yesterday. So thank you for that question, Steve Paris. Next question. And botched eye, botched eye surgery, great. <laughs> I hope your eyes are fixed by now. Hello, Maven, shout out from New Zealand. Wow, when I see stuff like that, it just amazes me. What's your thoughts on if the Montreal screw job was really just a work, RIP Bushwhacker Butch? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Mm. Yeah, I actually, um, I actually do some shows occasionally with, uh, with, uh, Luke and yeah, just more people from my childhood. So definitely RIP, uh, the Montreal screw job. No, it was not a work. Absolutely not. And the way I know that is you can gauge, you can gauge just by people's reactions, what is real and what is fake in life. And I'm sorry, I've watched, I've watched the screw job. That sounded horrible. I'm sorry. I've watched the Montreal screw job probably 50 times in my life. And when, when you see Earl count real quick with Vince right off, you know, uh, uh, you know, instructing that the match is over, at, you know, as the, the moves put on, and then you see Brett go to kick out and then immediately go down for an ankle lock. You can just tell by their reaction that it's, it's not a screw. It, it's not a work. And then, I don't care how much of a work something is, you know, the Brett spits on Vince McMahon. Like, you want to know what my line is? Spit on me. There's my line. Like, I'll do anything wrestling related that, you know, that, that, that the match calls for. You ain't spitting on me, though. Yeah, sorry. You ain't spitting. If you do, it better have, it better be two commas attached to that check. You want to spit in my face. So that's how I know it's definitely not a work. YOLO MC8562, hey Maven, did you get the 100K plaque? I did, I actually did. And um, yeah, I, it was, and I gotta give YouTube credit on that. They were on top of things. I probably got it uh, maybe two weeks after, um, 
two weeks after I, I went over 100K. Actually, have we posted that picture? Yeah, we did. We did? Yep. We posted it to YouTube? Yep. Oh, on there. okay. The wow, Growl, thanks for being such a fan. Go through the community page. You'll see it. <laughs> I was going to say we'd post it again. But I did get the plaque, and it's, again, thanks to you guys. I, again, I... I don't like the sound of my own voice as much as, as you, you all do, so thank you so much. Um, I, I, I don't have the plaque hanging up, but one day, one day maybe I will. Next one, becoming a lawyer. Oh, good luck with that endeavor. Hey, Maven, my name is Gary. Hey, Gary. And my friends and I still talk about your elimination of The Undertaker when we, are, when we were kids. On another note, what was it like working with Matt Hardy? Always liked his matches. I don't know how they do this, but every time, every time we do one of these, you guys, you you guys have the forethought to literally bring up a topic that we just filmed. Like I said, I flew in last night to film a um, a, a a quick video for this upcoming Friday's video um, about punk. Well. Earlier today, we filmed my last segment of rating of a wrestler, and in that, Matt Hardy is one of the wrestlers that we that we rate, and and also I'm gonna go ahead and forewarn everyone, um, and we're done with that segment, the rating of a wrestlers. We don't want to overdo anything. The very last wrestler uh, we do that we that we tackle is 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 Chris Benoit, so. Just that's there's my, and I trust me, I give unvarnished, my unvarnished thoughts of it. I look forward to you guys seeing it, and I look forward to the comments afterwards to seeing if you agree what my stances are regarding, um, regarding Chris. But and real quick, Matt was great. Like Matt, I give Matt credit for the the branding of himself. Uh, Matt had Matt Hardy brand years before guys knew you know, how to brand themselves in this business. So he was ahead of the curve in a lot of aspects. Um, and I give him all the credit. And Matt was just, Matt's just a likable guy. What's next? Not so much a question. Okay, uh, not, it's, not it's so much a question. All really right, needs. let's see. I like interesting stuff. Okay, Jonathan Rosler, why were you naked and getting chased by Alexis Arquette? <laughs> well, that's a that's a... Like I said in the last one, not exactly a soup question now, is it? Um, okay, so, all right, gosh, where do I tackle this one? So, that kind of, he's, he's speaking of my time on The Surreal Life. I was on VH1's old show, The Surreal Life uh, series, I think it was uh, season six. And in the house, you know, and I've talked about my time on The Surreal Life and what it took to get me on there. Um, but one of the, you know, people in the house with me was Alexis Arquette, the transgender um, actor, actor, actress from, from Hollywood who we uh, tragically lost a few years back. And I think early in the, in the 10 days when I was there, Alexis was chasing me around the pool, nothing salacious. Um, Alexis was, was one of the, you know, one of the people I enjoyed spending time with. I, again, I, I have no problem with taking myself out of my comfort zone, and that's exactly with uh, what being around Alexis taught me. I, I had never been anyone who had undergone that surgery, and you know, admittedly, probably went into it with preconceived thoughts and notions, and and left completely having those dashed. I mean, you learn in life, man. I don't care who you are, what you go through, what separates you. We're all people in the end. In the end of the day, man, we're we're all just humans. We're all humans that that have a lot more in common. That we 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 share a lot more of the same goals. Then there's more that links us than that separates us and that divides us. Yeah, someone might have different beliefs than you, or someone might live their lives different than you. But you know what? Here's what I guarantee. I guarantee they still want the best for their family, and I guarantee that they still want to feel safe and secure when they go out in the public. And that, I think we can all agree, links us and is something that a common goal that we all share. Mitchell Gillum, and thank you so much for the, uh, for the gifts, for the donations. Like I said, they're going to a good cause. One question, one rumor. Oh, okay. 
What's the difference between uh, preparing spots for a normal match and a hardcore match? Are you told which weapons will be used? And is it true Vince didn't know what a burrito was? <laughs> well, I don't know about the last one, um, but I can address the, the first part of that question. There is a difference when you're getting ready for a hardcore match because obviously when you're doing a, a hardcore match, uh, it, what makes it a hardcore match is the tools that inevitably are going to find their way into the ring. Um, now, whenever we would have a hardcore match, we would go down earlier in the day and they would always tell us where underneath the apron um, things were located. And they would always locate. And actually, I think we're going to end up doing a video on ring geography. And by that, you know, how wrestlers know how to separate the ring. Hard camera, opposite hard camera, um, announcer side or ramp side. Just a quick, easy way to... to communicate but they would always during my my matches or most of the time they would keep all of the all of the uh, the hardcore items the trash can lids the road signs the kendo sticks the chairs what have you they would always keep those on the ramp side so you know you weren't going out during a match and lifting up all the ring aprons and looking for something and then realizing oh it's on the other side or so in case you got slammed and the next spot was rolling out and getting a trash can lid you didn't have to run around the other half of the ring we always knew where all that stuff was located just to make it look like we knew what the hell we were doing out there next one bc pitch five thank you again so much for the thank you so much for the uh the gifts would you ever consider a comeback to uh, the Rockingham County Baseball League? I have a contact waiting for you. <laughs> I'll make you a Montezuma Brave right now. <laughs> okay. Um, not where I thought that question was going. So for those of you that know uh, my background uh, before wrestling, I was a... Uh, I was a half-decent baseball player back in the day, and the County Baseball League is one of the leagues I played in uh, during my college days. Um, would I consider a comeback? Absolutely not, because just like in wrestling, the better part of my athleticism, even in baseball, is it's, it's in the rear view. It's not, not going straight. Um, but, yeah, again, I'll be an honorary Montezuma Brave right now man i loved i love playing baseball it was one of the things that i hated having to hang up rat generation x uh thank you so much rat for the uh for the gift please do a review for the netflix show wrestlers would love to hear your thoughts love your vids uh keep up the good work actually great hey yeah, keep that. Keep that on though. I love it when you guys give us give us video ideas, and you guys have actually given us more ideas than you even know. Um, the wrestlers court video that we did last week that came from you guys. Um, I liked. Yeah, I like the idea of of doing the uh, you know what maybe even watching the show wrestlers and then doing a breakdown of it. I loved the show. I binged it in two days, and it wasn't even. Well, it started off to support Al. Uh, snow obviously but it it ended because of the characters that they had on the you know it, it moved forward because of the characters that they had on the show i thought they developed a lot of the characters i mean on off the top of my head i'm thinking of hollywood Haley J. I i thought i mean my god if she didn't grab you in episode one nothing will um you know and you know just seeing you know her ups and downs and and real life ups and downs and then obviously seeing what she could become in this business and then seeing and knowing because I've lived through what her demons are and knowing what's holding her back. It's just, it's actually kind of frustrating watching her and being like, you could, you could do so much and you just need to stop this. And, but Hey, she's young and she's extremely talented. And unfortunately, if someone's like me, I have to learn a lot of life's lessons the hard way. <laughs> but I do agree with that. I know my partner has mentioned in the past us maybe doing, um, what was the other show? Heels. Uh, heels, yeah. heels. I know he mentioned us maybe you know, doing some breakdown of, of heels. And I like, I like both ideas. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Keep the ideas coming, guys. Thank you so much. I wonder if you're going to get this one. Okay. 
Maven the goat or the, the goat no hat. Is he saying I don't have a hat on? You know what the, the goat is? The greatest of all time? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's no cap. No cap? Like no crap. Like Ah, no, no, so okay. cap is for crap? Kind of, yeah. It's just like no cap. Like. That shows my age. But thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> I, I, I'm far from the goat, but I will take the compliment. I'll take a compliment wherever they're given. So thank you so much, and thank you for the gift. No compi salts, though. No, no compli salts, though. No salt. Hey, I'm sure there's a compli salt coming on here. Yeah. And again, guys, if you don't know what a compli salt is, compli salt is a compliment that is mixed in with an insult. And I would say 90% of the time I've met people out, and they say something, a complisult is attached to it, and it might be something like, oh my gosh, I loved you on Tough Enough. I was rooting for you the whole time. You're not, not as big in real life, are you? There, there's a complisult, a compliment that's mixed with an insult. Or, you know, oh, I loved what you did with The Undertaker. It, that was the, my favorite you know, part of my childhood was watching you eliminate him. Yeah, they didn't really do much with you afterwards, did they? A compliment mixed with an insult. <laughs> All right, Devin, Devin Fleming, thank you so much for the gift, Devin. What was your reaction to finding out you were going to wrestle Chris Jericho for the WWE Championship on Raw? Um, I'll tell you what was most exciting about that, because no part of me even entertained the, the possibility of winning the, the, the championship that night. I knew that wasn't a possibility, so I didn't even entertain it, even in my dreams. But what I was excited about was that match was held in Richmond Coliseum. And for me, Richmond Coliseum, the dump that it is, uh, holds a lot of nostalgia with me. And the reason being is I saw my first ever wrestling show in that Coliseum. I watched uh, an old NWA show where the headline was Ric Flair versus Magnum TA. And during the match, in other matches was... Um, I think the Midnight Express wrestled the Road Warriors. So there's a lot of nostalgia. And the fact that I could wrestle and wrestle for the, the heavyweight championship in that same arena, man, that's life going full circle. And that's just, that's just things working out. You know, so many things in life go for the negative. Well, that's proof positive for me that sometimes things go full circle for the positive. Great question. All right, which one am I doing, the top or yeah. both of them? Top. All right. Omega, thank you so much for the – thank you so much for the uh, the tip, Omega. Why would they bring CM Punk back? All right, shocked it took this long to get into it. Can we balance out the wrestlers since CM Punk is ruthless aggression in the PG era? Careers can be ruined because people will want expectations if Punk, punk uh, style is like, huh? I didn't think about it that way, but I think what you're saying there is punk came from a different era than one that exists now. And people are going to attach failure or success unnecessarily to what they expect from punk and the era he comes from, which is a fair criticism. Um, obviously, the things that we were able to get away with back years ago they're just they're taboo now you can't do them now it's more of a pg product now so i don't know it is a fine line how do you let punk be punk and still make sure that all the advertisers stay or how do you let punk be punk and then still make sure that the families that you know want to let their children watch are still able to watch i don't know that's a fine line but Fortunately, guys, you know, with a, a you know higher pay grade than me and a lot more brains than me are going to be handling those questions. Here's what I do know: um, whether you like or dislike Punk, he's a lightning rod, and whether you enjoy watching him wrestle or dislike watching him wrestle, you talk about him, you think about him, and therein lies half the success you need to be in this business. I've I've said it in interviews before. I had way more fun as a wrestler when people booed me being a heel than I did as a babyface. You know, good, all wrestling is is good versus evil, and I prefer being evil. So, in essence, if you dislike Punk, but he makes you tune in, he's doing his job. And I wish him, I wish him the best, man. I, I, hope, I hope he's finally able to, to find happiness. I know he's probably 
you know, struggled with some of the locker rooms he's been in, WWE being one of them. I hope this go round he's able to 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 find, you know, consolation. And I hope I hope he stays injury free and has a you know, makes all the money in the world and then donates some up to this channel. Eddie zero zero one. How was Daryl to deal with <laughs> on TA? Any stories? Okay. All right, Daryl, the guy who unceremoniously had his balls hanging out when Hunter came to visit us, um, and that's is a shoot. He did have literally. Well, I don't know. I didn't see it. I, but I, as a rule of thumb, didn't ne necessarily look in Daryl's growing region regularly. Um, but I think he got known. Well, I guess, man, when you have your nuts hanging out, that's is what you you're gonna get known for that. Um, but at the time, man, he was just. All right, he came into that scenario, and he just had a big ego, and he would always tell us how great he is. And I, I heard a long time ago, you know, my, my dad used to, used to beat into me all the time that, you know, act like you've been there before, act like you've been there before. You know, if you hit a home run in baseball, don't cheer around the bases. Act like you expected to hit the home run. And I also heard a long time ago that, when you're good at something, you have to tell people that you're good. But when you're great, they tell you. And you know, Daryl was always telling us how good he was at something, which to me told me he really wasn't great at anything. You know, that he, he was one of those guys that, that when, he, when he did leave, I wasn't sad to see go. But that said, again, I don't want anyone to judge me for my worst days. If you do, you, you probably hate me. I hope people judge me for growth. I hope people can, can judge me for, you know, just, just being able, the older I get and the more wrinkles that I get and the more crow's feet I get on this face, the more I'm able to learn to become a better, a better human being and a better citizen. And if I ever get a chance to run across Daryl, I'll extend my hand and shake his and, and see and hope that he's doing well. Not a question, bud. Not a question. Brad Barton, thank you so much for the for the gift. Love the content, brother. Oh, thank you, Brad. We we literally try. If you could see how many texts me and this guy shoot back and forth daily, just coming up with and just spitballing and freelancing ideas and I mean, he'll send me like video video ideas and and I hate letting him down when I'm like, yeah, I probably can't speak to that as well as you know, a Randy Orton could, or as well as, you know, somebody else. And then, then it's back to the drawing board. But we're texting each other all day long. I'm um, just trying to come up with good content for you guys. And I'll say this, like, this, literally, this channel could become Mr. Beast, and I'll still say it. I, which I know it won't, but I'll still say it. I, no one's more shocked with the success on this channel than I am. And I just, I, I don't, I I sometimes can't stand my own presence. So the fact that you guys watch me on a weekly basis, amazing and humbling. Oh, hey, is that Fugazi? Can you see yourself making a comeback to WWE and the executive side? Well, executive side, that means I'm uh, one of the office guys, so no to that. But... Um, like I couldn't see myself being a producer. Like they, like those, those jobs are for guys that, you know, didn't just accomplished more within the wrestling business than I did. And I have no problem admitting that, um, where I could see a comeback was either in the announcing side or on maybe more of the, just the, the talent development side. I do think I have, you know, a, a marketable skill. Um, when it comes to, you know, being able to just, just help people through peaks and valleys that life has to offer. I've seen a lot in my life and that's not a good nor a bad thing, but what it has done is it's led me to this point to where I do think I have something to offer. And I don't know, like I said, I'm not holding my breath that they're calling. So don't get, don't get excited. I'm not. Next question. No, no, not a question. Dar Darius Harris, thank you for the gift. Let's celebrate the. Nah, that's not worry about that. Uh, <laughs> Just a, thank you for the gift, yeah. Darius. That's what we were doing there. Thank you, Darius. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Trevor, uh, Trevor C. Keep a hundred, Maven. I'm always do that. I promise. I promise you that. I don't know any other way. 
What's the worst HSM product you ever pitched? Oh, great question. Um, great question. So on HSN, um, man, I, they had me doing, uh, it's a combination of the two. They had me doing everything under the sun. I did like a shaver and I learned a valuable lesson real quick. I was doing a shaver one time and I used the word ergonomic on air. And I used it because in the ad of the shaver I got, it said it had an, ergon it had an ergonomic grip. And I said, oh, that sounds intelligent. I'll use it. So I used it. And then my boss afterwards was like, what does ergonomic mean? And I was like, I have no clue. And he's like, don't say things on air that you don't know what they mean. And as a good rule of thumb. And to this day, I still know, or now I know ergonomic means designed for comfort and ease of use. But I had to learn a lesson to not say stuff on air that I didn't know. The worst products they ever had me do until they found my sweet spot, which was sports. And I became the NFL guy for about four or five seasons. Um, one Christmas, you know, when Christmas time would come, all the hosts, they would run out of there, and, you know, because they didn't want to be there on Christmas Eve peddling Confederated products when I was the new guy. I didn't mind. So I got stuck there one Christmas Eve doing um, uh, luggage. And when I say luggage, not manly luggage, they it was like this flowery, like imagine if if you have a grandmother, imagine the luggage she would pick if she could pick her favorite luggage. Well, that was the luggage they had me selling for two hours one night. That was the first one. And the second one, I had to uh, I, I had to sell a, an automated litter box one night. And when you're on, you're on HSN and you're selling products, you have to demo products. And when you demo products, the demo, there's no demo team. The demo team is you. So I had to replicate a cat going to the, to the bathroom in this, in this litter box. And I had to demonstrate how the product would work. So going number one, that's easy. I'll just pour water in there and it looked like a little pee spot. Well, how do you demonstrate number two though? So I came, oh gosh, I'm stupid. I'm so stupid. I came up with the idea to get like, like, kielbasa and I would cut kielbasa up and drop them in to resemble the the number twos so here is this kielbasa in there and this thing going by and just afterwards my boss was literally like Maven don't use a food that people enjoy eating to replicate crap and I was like that's sorry but those are the two products great question Gosh, those are good memories, though. I love that job. Maurice the Beast vlogs. Thank you so much, Maurice. Did you get paid for being on Tough Enough? Ah, great question. Um, yes, but it's definitely not what these guys make, you know, nowadays. And by guys, I mean just people on reality shows in general. I mean, I see, and I don't know if this is true, but I think I see where the people that do Jersey Shore make 250 k per episode. God bless them. Good on them. Make that, make that money. Make as much of it as long as you can. Um, we did get paid, but we only got paid because they, by law, have to pay us because technically we were talent. Now, that payment came up, to, came out to, I think it was $300. I think it actually was like $309 a week. Um, you know, I never even cashed any of those checks. I waited till after the show was over. I mean, it wasn't, you know, they were... The only thing we really had to pay for was our food while we were there. But it you know, wasn't money you were going to be made rich off of. Obviously, tough enough, the whole, the whole show wasn't designed to make money off of that show. The money was, I mean, the money was in what you could do afterwards. So, but good question, nonetheless. Not a question, bud. Ah, Gregory Billy. Thank you so much for the, you know, for the gift, Gregory. I appreciate it. Thank you. And again, guys so much i again see that across the pond we got i love the fact that that you know that people in you know great britain are are donating to us that means so much and no again that this money's going to a good cause this one this one is going to go to saint jude's and again from the fans of this channel that's what i'm gonna so when they get that check, they're going to know that it's not from, not from us two. It's from you guys. Nonsense McGee. Ah, you're back, Nonsense. I love that name. 
dang, I didn't get a notification on the last video, uh, on the last live, so catching up here. Appreciate the responses on previous videos and so cool to donate to St. Jude. Thank you. Y'all rock and keep up the awesome work. Nonsense McGee, thank you so much. Yeah, we're always trying to, to make what we do better. And I think the first live we did, um, you know, the one thing people told us, they told us two things. One, let us know when you're doing another one. And two, don't do it in a car because I think it was shaky. So obviously the last, last live was in, in a house. And with this one, I made sure, you know, because I know when we go live, it's just, it's hard to plan, plan accordingly. So this one, we, I think we started advertising a couple days ago. So thank you so much. To give me a warning when you're... Oh, sorry. When I just when I just stop when I just stop talking, my partner says I got to be better at what I do. So, yeah. Uh, Juan Brawl one twenty three. Hey, Maven, love your channel. A question I want to ask is: Does the company want you to stay kayfabe every time out in public? Good question. And no, when I was there, the answer is no. And here's how I know that: um, I did a spot with uh, Taker early on and this is a it's a good story because it brings up one of the guys we lost as well i did a spot and i don't know if to this day i don't know if he was ribbing me he might have been i did a spot with taker during the match with jericho for the title taker came out and we did a spot where i held the chair and he rares me back and i go down and it looks like it takes my head off it looks literally looks like i it just chokes me and when I get backstage after that, um, I run into Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect. And I, he was probably ribbing me. I don't know. But he told me, he was like, um, you should, uh, you, you should you know, get a, a neck brace and wear it when you're out in public. So you're protecting, you know, Taker and what he did to you. And I was ready to do it. And I went up to Taker and I asked him and uh, Taker kind of giggled and he was like, nah, you're all right. <laughs> you don't need to go that far. So um, I know years ago, you know, and if you ever watched the show Tales from the Territories, you know, that what, what a wealth of information that was and what those guys, uh, I mean, those guys lived kayfabe. They lived it. I mean, they, you know, they wouldn't even be seen with, uh, you know, heels and baby faces together. So, um, yeah, the business had changed by the by the 2002, by the time I got there. So, great question. Zach, I'm ready for a question. Are you ready to get <laughs> me? I'm ready for Good. it. YOLO MC 8562. Uh, hey, Maven, and thank you again for donating. Hey, Maven, what was it like winning the hardcore title, especially off of Taker? Also, did you get that silver play button yet? Great content. Thank you. Uh, yes, we did get the silver play button. And again, thank you guys for that. What was the first one? What was it like to win the hardcore? Hard yeah, you know what was cool about it? Um, there are two things were cool about it. One, I don't think Taker wanted it anymore. I think it was probably more of a burden um, to him. And obviously, he didn't need a title of any sort. You know, he's just Taker. He's going to get over regardless. Whereas I needed the belt, so it accomplished two things. It got a cumbersome belt out of his bag. He probably didn't want to lug around. And two, it just helped me prolong and further uh, my legitimacy in the business. Now, here's what was cool about it. The fact that and like, me getting a pinfall victory on Taker wasn't going to happen because I did anything wrestling-wise to beat him. So... In order, how do you get around that? Well, you have The Rock come out. And it was so cool to see Rocky come out. And if you watch that segment over, he's got me in a reverse chin lock. And I'm looking up the ramp. And you can, and I know Rock's coming out. So you can actually see my eyes wide open, staring up the ramp for him to come out. And I just remember, you know, again, by that time, my night was over. All I had to do was sell and then crawl over and put my arm on him. So it was just cool being able to watch rock come in and rock bottom taker you know and then no i didn't have any big moves or anything to hit and then obviously walk out the hardcore champion and it was cool lost obviously too when i got backstage because i know you know titles you know no one wins no or earns a title you are all given a title you know a, a writing crew is giving you an opportunity I know I didn't beat Undertaker for the hardcore title, but when I got backstage, you know, people congratulated me like I accomplished it. And I always thought that was cool when they could have 
literally had him drop, had me drop it the next day, and there's nothing I could have or would have said about it. All right, next one. Your favorite pay-per-view match besides the Royal Rumble? Oh, good question. Um, the Survivor Series, one where I broke Gene Snitsky's orbital, uh, was probably my second favorite one. And just because, like, that was the only, you know, match that I was involved in a main event, uh, a big pay-per-view where I was involved in a main event. Um, obviously, my first WrestleMania was, was extremely cool, too. Just wrestling in front of that many people just i mean you know when i tell you when i tell you it's something you know it's something you're never ready for until you see it live that yeah that's it i was un, unbeknownst to what a live crowd of 72,000 people would look or feel like and i still remember my walk down to the ring just you know just not being able to believe that literally a year and a half before that I was a school teacher in Portland, Oregon, teaching sixth grade. Now, literally, I'm living, man, I'm living proof. If anybody out there that thinks, you know, life's completely unfair 100% of the time, I'm living proof, man. Dreams do come true. And I promise you, I've had my fair share of un, unfair life, you know, life coming at me. But, man, just, just, Always, always look to to brighter days because I'm living proof it can happen. Listen, I found out, you know, at an early age, the one and only time my mom ever lied to me, and that was that I'm indeed not the most special boy that there ever was. And you find out really quickly the older you get that we're not special. You know, we're 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 just people, and life comes at you, and life is gonna hit. And like Rocky said, are you going to hit back or are you going to you know, let it walk all over you? Decide to hit back. I hope everyone does that. Zach, I am ready for the next question. <laughs> BC Pitch 5. Here is 10 more for getting battered men out of such a uh, – yeah, thank you so much. Listen, guys, I, I – man, I wouldn't – I wouldn't feel – I wouldn't feel right – if we didn't do something to help people and help animals. And again, I'm not a saint, far from it, far from it. I'm anything but, you know, however, I do recognize the, the blessings the good Lord has bestowed upon me. And if I can ever, you know, just, just help in any way I can, then that's, that's what I want to do and feel good, you know, for each and every one of you that are with us tonight feel good that you're helping us as well. I love you guys and I I try to get like and I try to get to as many questions as I can. I try to answer, I try to I literally try to make you guys happy because I'm one of you. I'm a fan. I am a fan. I don't watch wrestling as much anymore, but I'm still a fan of the product. I'm a fan of the guys. I did Booker T show a few weeks ago, and literally, I'm driving to the vitamin shop to pick up more greens. Uh, what was I getting? More greens, more uh, probiotic, and more apple cider vinegar. I make a shake, and it's horrendous, but it's good for you. Um, and as I'm driving there, I look down in my phone and it's ringing Booker T. And when I see Book calling me, I immediately get giddy. Like, like I'm still a fan too. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. Booker's calling me. Let's see what he wants because I know it's not to check up. And it was the opportunity to be on his show to which I, in a second, said yes. You know, and that's... Dude, I'm a fan. I, I love this business. I can't watch it anymore because it hurts. But I still love, I love wrestling. And I love and I root for the guys. And, I mean, even to this day, you know, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers, were, we were in a little text chain back and forth because when I get back on Monday, I'm going and doing Toys for Tots, a toy drive that Matt does, I mean, that Brian does every year. And I still, man, I'm still giddy. You know, knowing that I'm in a text chain with these two guys. Like, like I'm a fan. And I hope they're like that with me. They better be anyway. <laughs> Zach, I am ready for the next question, please. All right. I still love his – I love this microphone. Like, I want this thing. 
It makes me feel like a, a radio radio guy. Hey, hot 98.7, uh, 15 minutes past the hour, 45 minutes to the top of the hour. <laughs> All right, what is this? Xavier to, uh, Xavier to God. Good name, Xavier. Maven, what do you think and feel of The Miz being the most successful tough enough participant, even though he lost in his tough enough season? I agree with that. Uh, I, yes, he is the most successful, but I will – I can make an I can make a solid argument that John Morrison's up there too, but it's between those two. But then again, you look at, at Miz, Morrison, Ryback, you know, guys that just you know did a lot more than I did. Um, and again, I've said it before. What I think my season accomplished was, uh, and what I'm most proud of, was two things. I'm proud that I never took a I never took one exercise off during my tough enough training. I didn't take a day off. I didn't take one exercise off. I'm proud of that because I willed my body to that. Um, and I'm proud that we got it to season two, because if I went out there and sucked and just put out stinkers, then no one was going to, you know, there was not going to be an opportunity for a Miz, for a Morrison, for a Ryback to come and follow. Um, you know, Miz, Miz is a hard worker. Miz is one of those guys that he's going to say yes to all opportunities. And no one's happier for what he has achieved. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a lot of things in life I'm not proud of. A hater is not one of them. I'm, I'm happy for the success he's found. I hope, I hope he makes you know, even more money moving forward, and I hope you know, he's able to achieve even more. I love that he's mainstream. I saw him on, you know, I, I think it was like the weakest link or something, and I think that's just so cool that you know, guys that, that did my show or you know, moving on to doing stuff that you see on a daily basis. And Chris Nowinski, I mean, look, he didn't win tough enough, but he had a wrestling run. And look at what he's doing now. He's making such a difference. Next one. Stephen P. Your channel has quickly become my favorite uh, channel. Thank you so much. Did the success of your channel surprise you? Yes. And does it feel like there's more pressure to keep creating content as it grows? Much love. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, we're always trying to chase, you know, our, you know, the, you know, the success, you know, that we, that we find. And we're always trying to get better. But that's because we care, you know, if we wanted to. And here's, here's how you know that we care about what we're doing. What would have been the two easiest videos to put out immediately? Royal Rumble and Tough Enough. And we have yet to do either of those videos. Those videos just seem to make sense. But you know, we care about the content we put out. We want to be you know, different than what other wrestling channels are, are putting out. And I commend uh, Stevie Richards for what he's doing. You know, he's, he, he puts out content I couldn't do. I couldn't analyze everything. I'll watch every video he puts out, and I'll be like, man, I didn't see it that way, and he's 100% right. So I love what he's doing, and if you don't know his channel, check it out. Cafe de Rene, Rene Dupree, I love what he's doing. I love how he sits this close to the camera and you know gets all these good guests on and speaks and literally holds nothing back. So, yeah, we're constantly trying to just outdo what we've done. You know, I, I, the only person I'm in competition with is myself and what we're doing because I truly believe the, the success of this channel can only help those other channels and vice versa. Their success can only help us. Bourbon Bruce, great name. Oh, I'm a bourbon guy, Bruce. Are the chairs real? Yep. How do they gimmick them? They don't. Um, we were actually talking about this last night. Here's the best way to describe it. The chairs are not fake. They are, there's nothing gimmicked about them. But the chairs that they decide to use, they're not the folding chairs that they might use at Madison Square Garden, the ones that stay down all the time that never get moved. There might be the chairs that you get at Kmart when you're getting ready to put together a sweet 16 party for your daughter and you need 50 folding chairs that aren't going to break the bank and they're not going to be too too expensive. They're you know maybe not the highest of quality, they're not the heaviest, but trust me, for someone that's taken his fair share of chair shots, 
they do indeed hurt, then there's nothing gimmicked about them. You just have to just man up and, 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 and take it, or you had to. I'm glad they got rid of chair shots, to be perfectly honest with you. Actually, I wish they would have did it 20 years ago. But, Zach, are we ready for the next one? We are. <laughs> and, again, guys, I see we're coming to – got a, a few more minutes left on this. Um, I can't thank you enough, again, for just – the success of what we've been able to put put forward. I don't know where this channel is going. I have no idea. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've, I've been brought back down to reality plenty of times in life. And, that, you know, like when I was released by the WWE, that was the last thing I thought was going to happen. So I've learned, you know, never be Icarus and fly too close to the sun. And likewise, never think it's going to get to, you know, too, too bad. You know, I always try to hover somewhere in the middle. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I hope it stays, you know, positive. Um, I hope we're able to continue with this, but I'm still, I'm still not sold that that we are yet. <laughs> Ryan Andrew Allen, thank you for the gifts. Thank you, Ryan. Maven, is it true that you are actually Billy Zane? I see that all the time. By the way, I loved your acting in Titanic and De Demon Knight. <laughs> well, Bill, I, I get the Billy Zane. I get the, the Billy Zane all the time. Um, yeah, he was great in Titanic. <laughs> Not even God himself could sink the Titanic. <laughs> um, I don't see it. I got to be honest. I don't see the Billy Zane one. Um, but, listen, hey, good looking guy. I'll take it. I'll take it. Impact. Thank, Impact, thank you for the gift. That's Thank you so much. Maven. Hope you're doing well. I am, brother. I'm good. I'm as I'm. I'm blessed every day. I, I thank the good Lord every day for the health I have. I appreciate the transparency on the PED videos. Yeah. Do you have uh, Do you have a continue to take them these days? Nah. Um. And he's talking about the the video we did on performance enhancing drugs. I've never made any bones about you know the fact that I I did, uh, I did roids and I. At the time, I needed them. I needed them to get the look that that was warranted, that was desirable for for television. Um, things have changed, obviously. After uh, after 2007, things changed. Um, I don't have a, I, I don't take them anymore. I have no need to. I'm trying to take my shirt off in front of as few people as humanly possible these days. And at 47, um, yeah, I just I like. I only took them and justified taking them because there was a need. Now that said, man, I like the man. I like the like. I loved what they did. I loved the look I had. I would, yeah. I've I've got I've got plenty of pictures of how I looked in them, and yeah, it was funny. I showed somebody, and they were like, "Oh man, aren't you afraid of these getting out?" I'm like, "No, leak them. Heck, let the whole world see them. I want people to think that's what I still look like." <laughs> Coach Ken, uh, thank you, Coach Ken. What a what a donation. Thank you, Maven. Thank you for your wisdom and inspiration, Coach Maven. <laughs> yeah, listen, I I don't know if it's wisdom, inspiration. Here's what it is: it's live time on this earth. I've earned every every belief, every every you know thought, everything that that comes up and comes up into this jumbled mess of a of a brain, man. It's because there's something behind it, and there's something that justifies my ways of thinking. And again, like I said earlier, I'm not always right. And when I am wrong, I have no problem with changing a position. I have no problem with being presented new information and changing my thought, pro my thought process, my thought pattern. I don't want to be first. I want to be right. All right, let's see. We got about probably time for one, one, maybe two more. Guys, thank you so much. Um, Pax of Basonica. Maven, have been a fan of you since your debut. You're the one. You're the one. <laughs> Question. When did you know you wanted to be a WWE superstar, and who was your nicest down-to-earth person behind Gorilla? My name is Michael. Hey, Michael. Thanks, brother. Great channel and videos. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, great question. Uh, when did I know I wanted to be a WWE superstar? I, 
yo, I knew I, I, so growing up, I was been big into sports, baseball and football. And I remember thinking that I was going to be either a, probably a professional football player. Then I went to college and I thought, well, maybe I'll be a professional baseball player. But when, you know, when my skills caught up with, you know, with uh, expectations, um, I quickly realized, you know, I, you know, I, I juiced every, every ounce of athletic ability I had in my body, but I still had more left in the tank. And I think, I think I always thought being a wrestler would be cool, but how the hell do you become a wrestler? It's like, how do you become an astronaut? Who knows? Um, and it wasn't until after I got out of college and, and baseball was behind me that I started really looking into it. And obviously I saw Rock doing what he was doing and I was like, man, I can talk shit. Like he, like literally I can, I, I mean, not to that level, but man, I can, I, I can talk. That's one thing I've always known I can do is talk. And you know, that's when I think it became a possibility. Um, yeah, but it, it yeah, I, I, I still, to this day, I don't know what it was that made me pull the trigger. I'm glad I did, though. I'm glad I did. And who was the nicest person behind Gorilla? Ah, the nicest person behind Gorilla. Um, <sighs> Gerald Briscoe was, to, and to this day, and I saw him a few a little while ago, Gerald Briscoe called me Maves, plural, <laughs> like there was two of me. And literally, I don't care if I went out and put a stinker out, he was always positive. And I could have went out and put the worst match ever, and he was going to find something positive with it. And he was at Gorilla on every match, so I would have to say. And I saw Briscoe not too long ago, and I, I'm a fan of what him and, and JBL do with, uh, with their show, so check that out as well. So I'd have to say Briscoe. Last question. King Snack, thank you so much. Gosh, what? thank you so much for the – you guys amaze me every time we're up here. Do you think the pacing of modern day wrestling is off? And what I mean is the pacing of the matches is way too fast. Yes, I do. Um, there's not much build up, like not selling big moves long enough. Nobody working body parts anymore. Yeah, you're a thousand percent right. Yes, the answer, short answer is yes. They don't tell stories anymore. Like literally, the whole way, you know, it, the way wrestling was explained to me was we're telling a story athletically. We're getting in the ring, and, you know, there's an easy way to figure out within the first 30 seconds whether someone's a baby face or a heel, and that's the story you're telling. And that's the way I learned, and yes, I do. I, I, think, when, I think when you got a match going on 30 seconds in and they're already throwing punches like fists, Man, that's something you should build up to. And moves like a DDT, like that's like that's not even a, a finisher anymore. Shoot, that's barely a hope spot. You know, and, and you know, guys just doing ho high spots, uh, you know, um, you know, one after another after another. You know, wrestling doesn't have to be that way. Um, I learned from guys like Billy Gunn who – as soon as I uh, was on the indies, showed me that there's a lot easier ways to go out there and put a match forward and still entertain the crowd. And but then again, I understand a TV audience. You know, you run the risk of losing people, changing the channel. I'm glad. I'm glad guys that you know have to make that decision, not me. But yes, I do. I agree 100% with everything you said. One more. One gotta, more. Gotta get this one in. Gotta get this one in. So Tyler. Oh. Tyler, absolute thank you. I love the picture, by the way, Tyler. I love uh, the uh, he's got a and he's got a picture of uh, DiCaprio uh, making a funny face. Great channel, brother. Any side effects of the Sarah, uh, Sarah, Sarah that you can share currently on it? Um, he's asked me if there's a side effect from the PED. Uh, yes, <clears throat> and um, one of the main side effects that hit me was. Uh, gynecomastia and for those of you that don't know what that is that is when you develop man boobs um, and it was something that like then you can take blockers for it all you want and I'm not going to give a <laughs> how you get rid of it I had to go through surgical means I had to actually have the surgery and ironically enough I, I gave my guy that gave my surgery I gave him to Alex Riley 
name you probably haven't heard in a while. Alex, hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, that was one of the one of the you know one of the the side effects I had. I got it really bad and had to have the surgery. You know, just and it got to the point to where it didn't matter how good I looked. I wasn't you know I wasn't going shirtless just because of how you know psychologically affected I was from having you know having gynecomastia. It was the worst. Um, so yeah, be, God, I hate ending this this way, but if you're going to go on something like that, have a plan. And by have a plan, I mean, go to a doctor, have a, uh, uh, an entrance plan. And more importantly, have an exit plan because everything in life comes to an end. Everything. That's the one thing age has taught me. You lose everything in life. You know, good looks gone, you know, killer physique gone. You lose everything. And um, just have a good exit plan and know how you're going to exit out of that life, you know, as healthily as humanly possible. So, real quick, see if uh, everyone can like the stream. We're at about 51 likes away from 1,000. 51 likes away from this? From, from 1,000 likes. From on. this? Yeah. Now, we made a promise that we would never ask for likes or subscriptions or anything. That was one of the promises we made <laughs> when we started this channel. We <laughs> said we refused to do it because there's nothing that I hate more than when I get on and someone's like, hey, we got a video coming up, but make sure you like, smash that button, and subscribe. And I'm just like, oh. Like, like, I just, I never wanted to be that guy. But now you want me to do that. You want <laughs> like, me to go against that. Guys, do me a favor. Life. Like this stream. I guess we're, what, a thousand away from? No, we're uh, 46 away. We're 46 okay, away. We're, we hit it now. We hit it. Yeah, just like, <laughs> this banter got us over. <laughs> Guys, I'm stupid. Like, I literally, like, there's a couple things that just literally irritate the hell out of me. And I just never want to be that guy that's asking you guys to every video, hey, like this video. You'll like it if you want. You'll, you, you'll subscribe if you want. And if you, and you know what? I don't want anything I don't earn. So, I appreciate you hitting it though. <laughs> Four doors down in this chat, we really wanted to hit 1K, so it was for him. It was for him. It was for four. For doors four. Down. For four doors down. Yeah. Well, there you go. Four doors down. That was for you, um, guys. We went a little bit over uh, what I promised. I know. I asking an hour out of anybody's tough, and I I thank you so much. Um, yeah, I still see where. I, yeah, she. Shoot, we still have 1,500 people on here. Yeah. Um, so let me tell you about my best day ever. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for, for joining us. I promise you. Um, actually, real quick tease. So I'm going to teach my heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, guys, I, without, I don't even know how to tease this. Listen, I don't know who my birth father was. I don't care. That's irrelevant. I never want to meet the guy. But what I do want to know is what my heritage is. And I wanted to, I've always wanted to know, like, I've, it, it's funny. Whenever I lived in Florida, people thought I was Cuban. When I'm in New York, people think I'm Dominican. When I was in Virginia, people think I'm black. I have no clue. I literally, I have no idea. Um, so fortunately for us, we, we've uh, teamed up with my heritage and they, uh, they're sending us a DNA kit. So I'm actually going to find out, um, yeah, there's a like yeah, I've had a I've had a, a unique life and we're going to put in and it's going to be an extra. It's not going to be a fr Friday video. We'd like to focus on those videos being wrestling related. This is going to be a me related video and if you're interested in that then I promise it'll be interesting. And I promise you'll hear stuff you'll be like, "What? I can't believe this." But yeah, you know, just another opportunity in life. You know that I would have never guessed a year ago. Um, I'm gonna finally have the uh, the the. <laughs> we'll finally have the mystery cracked of what the hell I am. Because um, to be honest, I have no. 47 years old, I have no clue. I've always assumed black, but who knows? Um, but so we have that video coming up, and if what we're hoping is we're hoping the the kit arrives, um, I think either tomorrow or the next day, and if so, we're gonna shoot the video immediately we're going to get to get it out there um and if it does what then when when we send the kid off we're going to shoot a reactions video and that's the one you're going to fly out to and if we if he's able to fly out we're hoping maybe it's next week if they can rush it for us and if you're my heritage you know get this rush job it'll do you good as much as it will us 
Um, and if we're able to do that, then I think we'll probably try to do another live because he's literally going to fly to me to do one video, which is, that's a lot of air travel. And uh, I'd like to at least make it worth it, maybe try to get another live in. If you, if you guys would like to see that, then, then uh, that's just a little tidbit on, on uh, what we got coming up. Yeah. So, um, again, I hope everyone had an amazing Thanksgiving. I hope you're equally uh, ready for the holiday season, Christmas coming up. Um, guys, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for every subscriber we had. I'm thankful for every super chat we have. I'm thankful for every question that we couldn't get to. I'm thankful for every person that shares this with their friend and says, you know what, I'm not a wrestling fan, or I, man, I hated this guy when he was in wrestling. I thought he sucked, but man, he's doing good stuff now, or I don't know who this guy is. I don't, I'm, I don't even know how he came across my feed, but I enjoy, I enjoy what he puts out. I'm thankful for all of you guys, and um, thank you. You, man, I'm, I'm 47 years old, and and I'm having, I'm having a new dream realized that I didn't even know I had six months ago. And that's because of you. Um, again, by the end of this week, you will see, uh, you will see your money, money actively put to good use uh, in the form of going to St. Jude's. And again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to make sure they know it doesn't come from me. It comes from you. Um, have a great night. An hour and 11 minutes is a lot to ask of anybody. I, I know I wouldn't have watched me that long, so take care, guys. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Take care, guys. Zach, can we show you how to do it? Yeah, thank you. Is it off? <laughs> yeah, an hour off. Right.